So it's a bit more than a week since the eagle has landed. And in this week, I had enough time to actually really test it, to integrate it in my rig. So how my experience actually was, hardware-wise, but also when using it on a computer, this we will cover in this video. Hey, this is Fear Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So we will actually structure this video in three parts. First part will be here at the rig. I will show you how I integrated it in the rig, the pros and the cons of it. In the second part, we simply look at the specs of the different models. And in the third part, we actually go to the computer and access it and I will show you how it performs. So for the first part, let's look now at the rig. And the first thing is that it should be actually installed either under the scope or at the same axis because for the inclinometer to work so that it actually shows you the tilt of the telescope, it obviously has to be in the same axis. And also that you can actually use here the eye, the sky monitor, it also has to point to the same piece of sky that actually the scope is directed to. With the Avalon mount, this obviously works perfectly because the Eagle here works as a counterweight to my scope. So I actually do not need any counterweight anymore. I had one kilogram before. Now actually the Eagle takes this up and I'm counterweight free. And just weight wise, it might be actually interesting to you as you can see, there's quite a lot of equipment now on my mount. So how much would you estimate does it weigh? Actually, everything together here, the whole top part, the eagle, the find the scope, all together is 8.3 kilograms. No more. So I could actually easily fit a full train, another one, down here. And the mount would still carry it. But let's go back to the eagle. First of all, how is it actually installed? As you might have seen in my unboxing video, there's about a million holes drilled into it on both sides and you get different size of screws. So you can easily screw something on. And you see, I screwed here on a dovetail and with that, I can easily fix it to my mount. That works fine. Now, when you look on the other side, you see that I have on here a Prima Luce dovetail clamp and also a Prima Luce dovetail. Now that's important to note because standard dovetail clamps cannot be screwed onto the eagle. It just doesn't fit from the holes. So you're actually forced to buy an eagle dovetail clamp. And another fun fact, standard dovetails like I have here do not fit into the Prima Luce dovetail clamp out of whatever reason it was, two millimeters or one millimeter too small. So, so yes, that's a little bit an annoyance if you have already a lot of gear at home. On the other side, I have also to say that what I received here is absolutely top quality and worth the price. So with that, I was then able to actually attach my find the scope to it. And so everything fits now nicely together. Cable management wise, it's an absolute dream. Everything fits right onto here. And the chaos from a cable point of view has massively decreased on my rig. This is on one side, definitely thanks to the Eagle. But on the other side, it's also thanks to a video of Urban Astro, where he actually finds a $15 cable management set on Amazon. And I ordered the same and it's really nice. All these little cable management gadgets here, they really um, help out to make it look much nicer and also there's a much less chance of entanglement. So obviously until I had everything like that, yes, it, it took about a week <laughs> and it took some trial and error. And also from a balancing point of view, it was not initially right. I had to change here also the mount, I had to move the arm a little bit up. But now that everything is done, it's nicely balanced, it looks beautifully, the cables are under control, 
So I'm really happy how this worked out. Okay, and here we are on my computer. And before we actually access the Eagle directly, let's have a look at the Prima Lucha website and the selection of Eagles. And it goes all the way from the cheapest Eagle, the Eagle LE, for about 800 euros, to the most expensive one, the Eagle XTM, for about 3000 euros. And there's the Eagle 4, the Eagle 5S, and the Eagle 5 Pro in between. So you might ask yourself, which one should I actually get? And for that, let's have a look here. First of all, and that's really what sets them most apart, is their performance. So I really like this graph here. So you have here a classical mini PC like the Mili Quieter, something that is commonly used. And the Eagle 4 and LE with their Intel Celeron um, processor, they do not get much higher performance than the mini PC. And I think what really sets the Eagle 5 apart from the Eagle 4 is that we now have desktop class performance. So with the Eagle S, we're still at the i3, but still you already get to a 183% higher performance than a mini PC. And then starting with the Pro, you have really desktop class i5 processors in there. So with a Pro, like I have now, you get to about 230%. And then obviously the XTM with AMD Ryzen, you get to a staggering 316%. When we look at it from a feature point of view, you obviously have with the LE, you have it extremely specced down and a lot of the features are not available. With the Eagle 4, you're missing the new features of the Eagle 5, so the inclinometer, the motion detector and the industrial grade SSD and RAM. Otherwise, the Eagle 5 has about the same features for all three models, where they differ besides the processor is the SSD disk. We go from 250 gigabytes with the Eagle 5S up to 2 terabytes with the 5XTM. And with the RAM, where we go from 8 gigabytes with the 5S up to 32 gigabytes with the XTM. Otherwise, everything is very, very similar. So that still raises the question, what does it actually mean? What should you buy? I can only give you my rational. I would not buy an Eagle LE or an Eagle 4 because you lose so many of the features that actually you can really wonder, does it make sense or should I actually go with a mini PC and a power box? So I would definitely go with an Eagle 5. Now from D3, it really depends on what you want to do with it. If you only want to capture your pictures with it, the Eagle 5S does the job perfectly and there's no reason to go above. But as soon as you have ideas to also do some post-processing with it, for example, that you have pics inside on it, you might actually consider one of these two. I think with an Eagle 5 Pro, and that's also my experience until now, you can easily run pics inside and work with it on the go. For example, for live stacking in combination with Nina, or for doing some basic stacking and post-processing right at the site. I think the Eagle 5 XTM really gets into play when you deal with extreme high volume of data or when you actually want to make the Eagle your main computer. And that's something else. The Eagle Pro and XTM, these are full-fledged desktop computers, except obviously of a powerful graphic card, so you probably cannot do very good gaming with it. But beside that, from a processor point of view, they are full desktop class computers. So nobody stops you, for example, while you're not shooting, which when you live in a country like Switzerland with a lot of clouds, this is most of the time, you can just take it off your rig, put a keyboard on there, with the HDMI ports, you can put a screen on there and you can use it as a completely normal computer. You can do your pics inside pro post-processing with it and whatever you wish. So that's just something also to consider that this does not have to be a dedicated device on your rig. So with that, let's go to something else. And that's the manual. You still know what it is? Use a manual. You know, there's so many devices we buy today and all we get is a little card with a QR code or a leaflet, two, three pages, and that's it. And we're actually kind of used 
to not rely on user manuals anymore. It's just like, well, you just try it out and it will intuitively work. Now there's two things why I show you the user manual of the Eagle 5. First of all, I probably never in my life saw such a great user manual as this one. It really goes step by step and it just includes everything. For example, it, it explains you how to connect an iPhone to the Eagle. Then it explains you how to connect the PC to the Eagle. Then it explains you how to connect the Mac to the Eagle. And it does that all step by step. And for example, here, there's this warning message you might get and they already have it in there. So, well, if that happens, here's what to do step by step. So this user manual never left me alone. It left no question unanswered, but, and this is the second thing to remember, this user manual is absolutely vital. If you buy an Eagle, do not try to set it up without this user manual. There's some vital steps at the beginning, which you have to do, for example, initial backup, and if you do not that, and afterwards you do a mistake, you can send the whole device back to Italy. So please, for once, <laughs> really make use of this user manual. It, it is great. It is perfectly written for everybody, but it is also needed. And with that, we're finally in the Eagle. So this is live, connected through remote desktop to my Eagle. And when Windows opens within the Eagle, that's what you see. You get right into this Eagle Manager X, which runs the whole Eagle. But you're still in Windows. This is just a Windows software, which automatically offers, and you can exit it, minimize it, and go to any other software. But before we do that, let's stay within this software here. So what can we actually see? Let's start with the thingy that moves. You see always how much power you're consuming. And at the moment I state that I'm on the electricity net, so it just shows me the wattage, but I can actually go in here and I can change it to battery. I tell how much capacity my battery is, how much the current charge status is, and then I say confirm. And now it actually shows me here with this power consumption, how long the battery will still run. Okay, then let's go to the window to the left here. And here we actually see the connectivity. On one side, this is my home Wi-Fi network. And here at the moment, I'm connected with the Eagle. And this is the same way as I also connected to my Mili Quieter before. So that's just a standard way, which works perfectly when you're at home. But the cool part is that the Eagle 5 has also an internal Wi-Fi network up here, AP. And when you're out in the field, you can actually access the Eagle with any device, with a notebook, with an iPad, for example, or with an Android, simply by using the remote desktop app of Microsoft and you enter it through this Wi-Fi network without having to have any other device which would enable that. Now, when you're at home and when you have an Eagle, I would still recommend that you use your own internal network. It's just safer also from a range point of view. They're limited obviously to this range of this network. So you have to stick still in a certain distance around your rig, while here you can go wherever your home Wi-Fi networks goes. So for example, I can actually hear from the basement steer my eagle who is on the terrace, two floors up. This would not work this way around. Next to the left, we have the GPS. Obviously at the moment, as my Eagle is inside, it doesn't show anything, but it tells you how many satellites are actually there, what the time and date is based on the GPS system, the altitude and the latitude and longitude. Going now in a circle, here we have the inclinometer. So that's something new now in the Eagle 5. So it shows you always how much tilted your eagle is. And that gives you a nice indication if actually your mount does what it should. If you suddenly have some very strange numbers here, which are not expected, you know that something is wrong and you probably should go and check on your rig. Now beside that here, we have the motion detector. And if I now for a second go away and 
just knock on my rig and you see what happens here. It actually shows. And the idea is that when that actually happens, this is registered and then the picture is automatically discarded and the new picture is started so that you already omit these pictures, which obviously will be trash. To finish off the sensors, if we go over here, here is actually my echo as stated, you have to buy that separately. It's another about 200 bucks. And then you actually get the temperature, the humidity, the pressure and the dew point. And based on that, the Eagle can then automatically derive how much your dew heaters actually have to be heated. At the moment, probably not at all. These boxes, by the way, there are two temperature sensors included, which I have at the moment not installed with the Echo. So I could actually on two additional points here, measure the temperature, and that would then also be automatically used for the respective dew heater. Now here we can go in a dark mode. When we do that, all lights on the Eagles will go off so that at a star party, we do not disturb other people with the LEDs. And then let's go to the ports. So we can give each port a name so that we know what we have actually connected. Here I have my camera, my mount, the eco and the guide cam. So these are these four USBs. Now with the USB two ports, I can actually switch them off or on. So if I click here, it gets green. Now this USB port is actually activated. If I click it again, it's deactivated. This is great out of two reasons. First of all, if I do not need it, I can switch it off. So it also doesn't consume any energy. But also if I have a device which sometimes malfunctions, if it malfunctions and it doesn't work right anymore, I just cut it off from the energy and I put the energy on again and then it restarts. So if you have a remote observatory, this is a great way to ensure that you also remotely can actually switch devices on and off again. On the other side here, I have my three dew heater ports. Also they, I can leave them off so they do not consume any energy. If I do not shoot, if I want to turn them on, I click and then they will actually now consume as much energy as needed. And you see it's a moment practically zero because with such a big difference to the dew point, it's not really necessary to heat them up. Now over here, we have the energy ports. I only use at the moment one. This is the camera. And you see the cool part is because when I turn it on as it is a cooled camera, it makes noise and it uses a lot of energy. So at the moment, I simply have it off and I have my quiet. And if I want to use it, I simply click it and the energy is flowing. Same with the other ones. And then what I've almost forgotten here is the eye. So this actually shows the sky quality. At the moment inside, obviously it's covered. 30 is the darkest numbers. If I would be outside and open it up, it would be about 22 for a very dark sky to about 18 for a rather light polluted sky. Down here I have some advanced settings. So here I can actually turn this Wi-Fi access points on and off. I can define what the power button should actually do. And I can even define here after startup, which of the ports should already be green. So deliver energy and which ones should be off. I like to have everything off when I start up and then I decide for myself if something should actually get energy. So this is nice, but this is a Windows PC. So there's a lot more software which can be installed obviously on it. And the absolute great surprise was that so much software was already installed on the Eagle. So PHD was already installed. Nina was already installed. Cartesiel was already installed and all the ASCOM drivers needed. So this really saved a lot of time. Now I personally use Nina for the capturing. So my question was obviously, what can I use now of all these functions within Nina? Because that would be the end goal. So let's go into Nina and have a look at that. So we're now in Nina and I just want to show you what you can actually do. So here we have the switches. So all the switches that are available are now also here available. So here, for example, my two dew heaters and here the energy port, the camera. And then the other thing, if you go to weather, so here I have now the temperature, the humidity, the dew point, the pressure and the sky quality. That will be all delivered to Nina. So far, so good. But now comes the presently bad news. None of this data is actually available in the sequencer. And that's obviously the end goal. 
because you want to use this stuff for triggers. You want to say, for example, well, if my sky quality falls under, then please stop capturing or pause capturing for 10 minutes or pause capturing until it's better again. Or please alarm me if there's an extreme pressure change so that I know that thunderstorms are coming, stuff like that. So, but the good news here is that I approach Prima Lucha Lab and ask them what the plans are. And now, especially with the Eagle 5, where a lot of new features like the inclinometer, like the motion sensor sign to introduce, and they're at the moment not even available here. They are ready in talks with all these software vendors. And while they cannot exactly give a date, but within a reasonable date, all this should be available. So I think that's, as always, the price you pay when you have something which is really, really new. Then not all the software already supports it, but I'm confident that within a rather short time, this will be available. When it comes, obviously, to the switches, they are already available in the sequencer. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the performance of this computer. So I just opened now Stellarium. And as you can see, it behaves very, very well. Also from a graphical point of view, this really flows nicely. This is live. This is not in any way accelerated. So no problem at all. Let me also open PixInsign now on top of it. And you also see that it loads pretty fast. So now that we have actually seen the Eagle 5 from the outside and from the inside, the question is, what does it all boil down to? And for everybody who has already seen Nico's video, where he compares the ASI Air with the Eagle 5, I can simply say, I agree. <laughs> for everybody who has not seen it, I think the Eagle 5 is at the moment the best Astro PC you can buy by far. But it also comes with a price that has to be very clearly stated. And then you can ask yourself, is this luxury? And I would answer, isn't everything we do in this hobby luxury? Nobody compels us to do astro photography. There's no bigger meaning. So at the end, like with every other equipment piece, you need to know to which quality level you want to go, how much your budget is, and how much this specific equipment part is vital for you within the realm of the whole rig and which priority it has. And so if a high quality, highly reliable, fully featured Astro computer, where everything is combined in one sturdy package, is something that is high on your priority list and you feel it brings value, then the Eagle 5 is definitely for you. But now this all said, to conclude, I want to remind you on the absolute biggest advantage that the Eagle 5 has. It is red. With that, see you next time and clear skies.